Thrilled to have here on the Rich Eisen Show, a man who covers the Lakers for the Athletic, Bill Orem, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Bill? I'm doing great. How are you, Rich? What was last night like? 6,000 people in the building, big-time basketball game, like uh, like old times, huh, Bill? Last you know night. what? I'll, I'll just say that that was the most fun I've had at a basketball game in more than 14 months. You know, as somebody who didn't cover the bubble in person and, you know, who has kind of been covering this, this slog of, of a regular season, 72 games, kind of jammed into a few months, no fans in the building, really no energy. Um, last night felt the closest to normal it's been. You had celebrities courtside at Staples Center. Michael B. Jordan was there with Drake. You know, uh, heavyweight battle between LeBron and Steph Curry. Um, and then it came down to the last play, which you love to see in a game that is that has stakes. So, you know, I, I mean, there's so much in the world that is not back to normal, and 6,000 fans is a far cry from what, you know, a rock and staple center would normally consist of. But it was it was a heck of a lot of fun, I thought, last night. And, you know, really sort of kind of set the stage for what to expect, you know, going forward from this Lakers team and, 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 and in this Western Conference battle. You know, Bill, we were talking just at the, the top of our show how the concept of, you know, the Clippers uh, apparently doing what they needed to do to make sure they were ensconced safely in the fourth seed to avoid any, um, any crossing of the paths with the Lakers until the last possible moment and what they were doing and whether they were really doing that or not. And the concept was, you know, hey, you you want to see the Lakers early uh, as opposed to late before they get their Mm -hmm. sea legs under them. It's tough to look at that second half and not think that the first half was the half and the the time where you wanted to get the Lakers and that maybe last night's game was enough for the Lakers to get back into the groove like last year. What do you think about that? sense bill well i guess you, you never know when the, the switch gets flipped exactly but but it, it did feel like obviously the lakers needed some time to feel out the warriors to kind of figure out what playoff intensity looks like you know one thing the lakers kept talking about last night lebron mentioned this is that the warriors had kind of been in playoff scenarios the last few games trying to lock down the eight seed whereas the lakers have kind of been coasting you know, they, I think they, they they finished the regular season on a five game winning streak, but you know they hadn't played games with stakes in a really long time, and I think they were caught off guard by the intensity and discipline that the Warriors started the game with, and I think the Lakers needed some time to catch up. You know, but I don't know if I would go so far as to say that one game got LeBron back in his groove and got you know Andre Drummond acclimated and, and got all the pieces you know firing in the way they'll need to when they get into those um, more meaningful. Uh, playoff series, or excuse me, I guess I should just say those those more um, intense playoff series where they're going to be you know need to beat the Phoenix Suns four times and and so on. I just I felt like that game was you know what it needed to be. You know they were they they um, they made the plays they needed. They 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 rose to the occasion in the right moment. I mean LeBron was not very good in that game by his own standard until the fourth quarter. Um, Anthony Davis. Same. Like I think it was like five of eleven uh, to start the game, and then five of six uh, in the fourth quarter, something like that. Like had a huge fourth quarter. It just is, um, you know, the Lakers were good when they needed to be, but they're going to need to be good for forty-eight minutes against the Suns um, and seven times. So I, I do think there is still a little bit of a bar the Lakers need to clear here. But I thought last night was was really galvanizing for them, and in in, in that they haven't had. Um, they haven't really had sort of a rallying cry this season. You know, the bubble last year, they were the most dominant team. They came together, were really connected. And this year, they've kind of been a little more fragmented. And last night was kind of the moment where it felt like maybe they were starting to pull together just in time. Yeah, and then Vogel uh, appeared to do what he needed to do uh, as well. And I'm wondering maybe that is something that that, that is of concern or, or this may be the way it goes um moving forward or it was just needing to do what he had to do to get out of dodge last night with the matchups and and putting Wes Matthews and and Alex Caruso out there in crunch time and removing the two Lakers that 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 were added uh prior to the season and midseason as the supposed big upgrades over last year's championship team in Dennis Schroeder and and Andre Drummond what did you make of that Bill Orm? Well, I mean, kind of two separate issues, but um, they did go hand in hand. I mean, Schroeder is still working his way back from the health and safety protocols um, and did not look good last night. I mean, I think he started one for 11 from the field, uh, got a little too, I think, a little too aggressive offensively looking for a shot, you know, on some pretty critical possessions in the, in the last six minutes of the game uh, was not was not really helping the cause. I don't think you'd say last night. Um, and then Andre Drummond. um 
that just is going to be a matchup issue for the Lakers going forward. There's going to be some nights where you can really lean on him and, and he can go bang in the post with opposing bigs. But against teams that like to go small, he can be a liability. And that's why you saw him only play 17 minutes last night. You know, it might have been, you know, 15 minutes too many, frankly. I mean, that's not a good matchup for Andre Drummond. And it felt like Frank Vogel was trying to kind of thread the needle there of, you know, trying to keep Andre Drummond happy, try to establish him in, on the inside early, but also be ready to go to Anthony Davis. And in the second half, he did with AD at the five. And, you know, it's astute to point out Wesley Matthews because the guy didn't play in the first half. And he comes in and, you know, had stayed ready and, you know, made some really big plays, knocked down an early three in his, in his shift. And, you know, to me, that's kind of what the Lakers team needs to be. I mean, they need to be nimble. They need to have guys who come off the bench and, you know, not, not play some nights and then come up huge um, in, in subsequent nights because they don't have a set, you know, eight-man rotation night in and night out like you're going to see from some of these other contenders. They probably have 10 or 11 guys who are going to play in the playoffs um, but not every night. And so those guys understanding their roles and, and being ready when they're called upon is going to be absolutely vital. And we've seen it from Wesley Matthews actually a lot over the last few games. And what's interesting about him is if you go back to when he was signed, all the all the um, chatter out of his camp was that he signed with the Lakers for a defined role on a championship team. His role this year has been anything but defined. I mean, we're talking about a career starter um, you know, who had you know been a staple of every team he'd been on. He's been in and out of the lineup. Um, and he's kind of figured out how to be this plug-and-play kind of superstar. When the Lakers have needed him, he's made some huge plays, and he's been a guy they've closed with in um, some close games uh, in recent weeks. Go back to that Knicks game and uh, and then the, the, the Rockets game after that. He's He's been a huge guy in the final minute of games. Bill Orem, the uh, Lakers beat writer for the Athletic here on the Rich Eisen Show. And, you know, Bill, it's very fortunate that w- we were able to get you to appear on this show i don't usually go through this uh with the guest about how i i I book the guests but um i saw three of your numbers and i I went for the middle one and um (laughs) i'm glad that it worked out um so what's with that quote from last night bill having been around lebron as much as you have give me that uh well, there is. I have a cynical here. side, uh, which I which I hesitate to share on uh, on a global platform like this. But what the hell? No, please uh, do, please do. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, LeBron said two things last night. One was that when he got the ball, the first thing he did was check out the shot clock, and the second thing he did was realize that he saw three rims and picked the one in the middle. And my my the cynical side is like, well, how could he read the shot clock if he <laughs> if he saw three baskets? <laughs> But, um, Wouldn't there be three listen, shot I mean, clocks, right? Wouldn't there be I three shots? Maybe he saw he saw it said point nine three <laughs> different times, and that and that expressed the urgency to him. I, I, you know, LeBron was was hurting. Where we sit at Staples Center was right next to where he went down after that foul by Draymond, and that was a that was a pretty gruesome play. And I wasn't sure, actually, frankly, until after the game, what had um, what on him was hurting <laughs> because he 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 landed on his on his backside. His, le- his leg kind of landed awkwardly, and it looked like he might have hit his head on his way down. And so when he's on the ground, you know, he was touching his head, he was touching his face. You know, later realized, you know, he was checking for blood, and he was blinking to try to, you know, make see what his vision was like. I didn't know if he might have a concussion. Um, you know, it was, a pretty, it was a pretty gruesome play, and it wasn't, you know, malintent by, you know, by Draymond. It was a hard foul to keep LeBron from scoring in a one-point game. But, um, you know, I believe LeBron. Like, LeBron's eye postgame – if you saw any of his post game interviews, it was drooping. It looked like he'd taken a punch. Yep. Um, so he was um, he was hurting. I you know, but it, it just it, it just adds to the myth and <laughs> and sort of legacy of LeBron James that you know. I mean, I don't know how many times over the course of the regular season we see him shoot it from there or see him shoot a step back from thirty five and you know go off the front iron and and, and you kind of roll your eyes and say LeBron like not a good shot it's late in the game there's 40 seconds left lakers are down two and that's the shot he comes up with and you're kind of like come on lebron like get to the basket but then in you know in that moment you know he he uncorked that one and again we're on that end of the, we're on that baseline watching the ball head right to the basket and i was like that's going in and it just was it was just an unbelievable uh moment and again you know when you talk about the lakers being defending champions but not really playing like it this season and not really having that identity or that you know, that kind of moment to hang their hat on that says you are the Lakers, you have LeBron, you are defending champions, you know, have that swagger. I feel like that moment um, sort of became that, where the Lakers could sort of use that as their reset to say we are here and we're ready for, for this playoff run. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't doubt at all that I'm sure Draymond got him in the eye. There's no question. There was no question in my mind. It was just, you know, um, and, and I, 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 I haven't also been hit by somebody like Draymond Green <laughs> in my entire life. I have never been contacted by anybody that size, let alone having somebody with that hand size take one of their fingers and, you know, hit me in the eye. You know, and I, I, I did, sit, as I'm sitting there, think that he was – while the concept of common foul or flagrant foul was under the hood, to use the NFL phrase of replay, that he might have been, you know, making sure that there was uh, everyone was no. Even Van Gundy was saying in the broadcast, you know, he, he's making sure everybody sees how hurt he is, and that might actually gain the shots and possession, which would have been so huge at the time. Um, it's just it, him making that shot and then looking at Steph and pointing the eye, kind of like you know, and I can't even see. You know what I mean? Like yeah. It, yeah. It, it was, it was. You know, there's some athletes who will talk about it, and then there are other athletes who'll be like, "Yeah, I, 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 what are you talking about? I, you know, my eyes, I'll be fine." You know what I mean? Like, and and LeBron is the the former, not the latter, and that's just part and parcel of number twenty three. There's no question about it. Well, that. he also, yeah, and he also, um, you know, he also makes it very clear that he feels, you know, disrespected. When he feels disrespected, he's not afraid to say it. And you know, you go back to when the Lakers won the championship in the bubble. That was the first thing he said. You know, this organization wants their respect. You know, Jeannie Buss wants their respect. Rob Palenka wants his respect. And I want my damn respect, too. And you sit there and you're like, you're LeBron James. You've got four MVPs, you know, four championships. You are, you know, in the conversation for the greatest of all time. Like, who doesn't respect LeBron James? Skip Bayless. But then at the same time, like, there are, there are, plenty, of, there are plenty of times that we all sit there and think, well, is LeBron at the end of the road? Is LeBron going to be able to do this? Right. There is a lot of LeBron skepticism in the world. And I do feel like, you know, moments like that, he wants to make sure that you appreciate what he's doing. Because he is, I mean, it goes without saying, but he is an all-time great who summons these, you know, unreal performances on a consistent basis. And especially, you know, when the season um, is on the line and matters most. I mean, if that shot doesn't go down last night, we might be talking about a completely different scenario for the Lakers. The Lakers end up with their most favorable playoff path that they could have out of this sort of range they're in. Um, and you can you can you can sort of you know do some mental gymnastics, and they're in the finals pretty easily. They lose last night and have to play for the eighth seed. That road gets a lot more treacherous. So uh, before I let you go, Bill Orem, first blush thoughts on the matchup with the Suns. What do you think? Well, I, I mean, I saw that they, the the Lakers opened as favorites in the series, which is just uh, I get it, but it's it's kind of unbelievable just to have a seven seed favored over a two. But it speaks to sort of how disjointed the regular season was and the fact the Lakers are healthy just in time. I don't think the Suns are a good matchup. Or excuse me, I don't think the Lakers are a good matchup. Let me get this right. I don't think the Suns can match up with the Lakers. You know, Anthony Davis is is obviously a bad matchup for most teams, but I look at the Suns and I'm wondering who guards Anthony Davis. You know, I love Mikhail Bridges and I think he's, you know, one of the young um, stars in the league that we're going to be talking about for a long time as kind of the guy who can do everything on the floor in a supporting role. Um, but you throw him at LeBron, who's left to try to wrangle with Anthony Davis? You know, Dario Saric, to me, is not an answer. And I, I just feel like the Lakers are going to be too physical um, and, and are too good uh, in transition. Um, you know, the Suns have had an amazing season. Wouldn't count them out. Chris Paul, um, you know, the resurgence, uh, you know, not even a resurgence, just the continuation of everything he's done throughout his career is, is admirable. And I think, I think people are sleeping on the Suns as a contender a little bit and see the Suns kind of as this – feel-good story that, you know, is maybe a year away, that this is a, a transitional step toward becoming a contender. Um, but, I, you know, I, I don't know. When I look at it, I just see the Lakers having too much, too much, um, too much inside for the Suns. But, but we'll see. I mean, the, 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 they, they were a game off the best record in the league for a reason. And the Lakers, I mean, we haven't seen them at their best for an extended period of time. And, a playoff series is just a different level of intensity and requires a different level of, of being locked in. And that's something that the Lakers haven't had uh, really since they left the bubble back in October. Bill, thanks for the time. Thanks for the thoughts. Um, and thanks for your reporting that I get to read uh, on The Athletic. And I look forward to your coverage throughout the playoffs and keep looking for uh, my call. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate that so much. Thank you, Rich. You bet. That's Bill Orem. Check him out uh, on The Athletic. And as you can hear, he knows his basketball. And he knows his Lakers. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.